now we are going to discuss malignant tumors of the vulva and before going into the detail of the malignant tumors of the vulva first i am going to discuss with you vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia shortly we call when this is most commonly seen in premenopausal women it is a discolored raised plaques often white after application of 5% acetic acid at colposcopic examination when is mostly multifocal and most often associated with human papilloma virus 16 bonart papillosis is the term we use for when 3 erythroplasia of kera refers to when lesions in mucous membranes of the vulvar vestibule they are often red when which is low grade may spontaneously regress especially in young or pregnant women local excision is the recommended therapy gross appearances they are mostly flat or papular discolored lesions they may be white but can be red gray brown or black microscopic features when one which is low grade the nuclear pleomorphism and hyperchromasia involves the lower third of the epithelium increased mitotic activity is also seen in the lower third of the epithelium flat condyloma is the term used for when one when two and when three they are high grade there is nuclear pleomorphism and hyperchromasia involving the lower two third in when two and full thickness in case of when 3 of the epithelium binucleate and multinucleate cells are often seen atypical mitotic figures are also present there are kylocytes present within or adjacent to the lesion amino histochemistry the lesion is p16 ink 4a positive there is high mib1 index other diagnostic techniques include pcr ish to identify human papilloma virus 16 ploidy the wind lesions mostly contain aneuploidy population of cells now this is the photograph which shows microscopic features of win 3 vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia grade 3 now the yellow line shows that the entire thickness of the epithelium is involved in dysplastic changes and also marked with dysplasia whereas word p shows that there is parakeratosis now we are going to discuss squamous cell carcinoma of vulva this tumor is seen in two population of patients in younger women there is a history of smoking along with human papilloma virus associated lesions and in postmenopausal women with well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma and there is no evidence of human papilloma virus infection gross appearances superficially invasive these tumor present as red papule white plaque or irregular ulcerative lesions the invasive lesions they are exophytic papillary mass or endophytic ulcer which may be solitary microscopic features there is full thickness involvement of epithelium by pleomorphic cells with high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and increased mitotic activity atypical mitotic figures are often present microinvasive squamous cell carcinoma the tumor depth is less than 1 mm which is measured from the basement membrane of the nearest dermal papilla to the point of deepest invasion by tumor it should be less than 2 cm in diameter invasive squamous cell carcinoma it is greater than 1 mm in depth regarding regarding invasion there is variable degree of squamous differentiation that is keratin pearl formation now the gynecologic oncology group grading of this tumor grade 1 no undifferentiated cells or keratin pearls present grade 2 less than 50% of undifferentiated cells grade 3 greater than 50% of undifferentiated cells there are variants of 
Squamosal carcinoma. Number one, squamosal carcinoma with tumor giant cells. It is a non keratinizing with pleomorphic multinucleated tumor giant cells. Spindle cell squamous carcinoma. The tumor is composed of pleomorphic spindle cells which are positive for keratin. A cantholytic squamous cell carcinoma. The tumor shows pseudo gland formation due to a cantholysis. Immunohistochemistry, cytokeratin positive, P16, I and K, 4A positive generally, mucin negative. Other diagnostic techniques, PCR, ISH for human papilloma virus 16 shows 75% of the tumors contain this virus in young women with history of when. Ploidy, most of these carcinomas are aneuploidy. Now, this photograph shows microscopic features of squamous cell carcinoma of the vulva. Keratin pearls are shown by letter K, whereas desmoplastic reaction in the surrounding areas is marked with D. Regarding treatment, the most important prognostic indicators are tumor thickness, depth of the tumor, diameter of the tumor, the vascular and lymphatic invasion of the tumor. Local wide excision is preferred treatment for superficially invasive carcinoma, whereas when the tumor invasion is more than 1 mm deep, then it is treated with partial or total vulvectomy along with removal of the inguinal lymph nodes. There is another tumor of vulva which is malignant melanoma. It is most common in the labia and in older women. The mortality rate is very high even when localized. It is most often diagnosed when deeply invasive. Local recurrences are very frequent. Overall, 5-year survival rate is seen between 40 to 50 percent of cases. Gross appearances, this tumor present as a pigmented macule, papule or plaque. Microscopic features, these are broad, poorly circumscribed, asymmetrical proliferation of large, atypical melanocytes appearing either as single cell or nests of cells at the dermo-epidermal junction. The melanocyte extend to the overlying epidermis in a pegetoid pattern. The nests of melanocytes are not distributed evenly at the dermo-epidermal junction. When the dermal nests of cells are present, they do not show maturation with progressive descent. Atypical mitotic figures and necrosis may be present. Now to see the extent of the lesion, there are clock levels. Level 1, melanocyte in situ. Level 2, extension into papillary dermis. Level 3, the neoplastic cells fill the papillary dermis and extend up to the reticular dermis. Level 4, extension into the reticular dermis. Level 5, extension into the subcutaneous fat. Immunohistochemistry, S100 protein, Milan A and HMB45 positive, CEA negative. Now there are two photographs which show microscopic appearances of malignant melanoma. The first photograph shows that atypical melanocytes which contain melanin marked with yellow M are present in the dermoepidermal junction and in the epidermis. Whereas in the second photograph, these atypical melanocytes containing melanin marked with yellow M are present in the dermis. Now I am going to give you a short description of two uncommon tumors that is Bartholin gland adenocarcinoma. Now why I am giving you the description of this tumor? There is a Bartholin cyst in the vulva. So the examiner may ask about is there any carcinoma at that place so you can say that there is a Bartholin gland adenocarcinoma. It is seen in older women. Now important point it is clinically may be mistaken for a Bartholin cyst. Around 20% of these tumors present with inguinal lymph node metastasis. They are either treated by wide excision 
or vulvectomy with inguinal femoral dissection of lymph nodes gross appearance is it is a solid infiltrative tumor which occupies the anatomical site of the normal bartholin gland microscopic features adenocarcinoma greater than 40% there are generally non specific features of adenocarcinoma and you can find malignant glands this type of tumor has the highest rate of lymph node metastasis intra cytoplasmic mucin is present the cells are cea positive then the other feature is squamous cell carcinoma which is around 40% and you can find uel appearances of squamous cell carcinoma then adenoid cystic carcinoma seen in about 10% of cases and they have better prognosis transitional cell carcinoma seen in about 5% of cases adenosquamous carcinoma which is seen in about 5% of cases but has a poor prognosis amino histochemistry cytokeratin positive cea positive s 100 protein positive in adenoid cystic carcinoma now this is the photograph of bartholin gland adenocarcinoma showing its microscopic features you can see that the lumen of the glands are marked with g whereas light brown arrows point towards the stratification of the pleomorphic cells and you can well appreciate the glands are lying back to back against each other leiomyosarcoma of vulva most common vulvar sarcoma but it is a rare tumor seen in women of any age it arises in labia majora mostly presents with pain treatment is wide excision of the tumor the tumors greater than 5 cm in diameter have a high rate of recurrence metastases are seen in lungs and liver gross appearances the tumor present as a well differentiated firm mass with infiltrative edges focal areas of hemorrhage necrosis and cystic degeneration can be seen microscopic appearances the tumor is composed of interlacing bundles of smooth muscle cells with perinuclear halo there is coagulative necrosis mitotic figures are greater than 5 per 10 high power field nuclear atp is present amino histochemistry vimentin positive cytokeratin occasional positive cells desmin and sma positive s 100 protein negative now i intentionally discuss this tumor in the rare tumors of vulva because wherever you find leiomyosarcoma the microscopic features remains the same as well as the criteria of malignancy there are other sarcomas of vulva and the example is embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma malignant fibrous cystocytoma angiosarcoma hemangiopericytoma kaposi sarcoma alveolar soft part sarcoma liposarcoma epithelioid sarcoma so these are various sarcomas you should remember the names of these sarcoma